Hey guys, it's Victoria, and welcome back to some more of the Crooked Man. I have no idea where I left off or what we were doing. I know I just discovered, I was pretty, I'm pretty sure if I remember right, that the Crooked Man is just out and about doing his business. Did I read this already? Yeah. Okay, I read this. I read this. Anyways, so that's what we're doing. I uh, don't want to leave this room because what if it gets me? Can I just hide here if it gets me? Like, haha, can't see me. No, can't do that. Uh, right? Um, do you guys ever, like, get a song stuck in your head and just won't leave? Because that's me right now. Anybody remember that show? <laughs> this would be a far stretch. I don't remember if it was on... I don't remember what channel it was on, or what thing it was on. But it was called The Romeo Show for... <laughs> anybody who remembers that and I got the theme song just stuck in my head don't know why why can't I why doesn't it say anything when I look out the windows didn't it say something before anyways yeah I got the theme song stuck in my head I don't even remember anything but the fact that it's like something 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 the Romeo show like I can get the beat in my head but that's about it and let me tell you it's kinda of confused is it gonna eat me Okay. I'm just waiting for the fireplace to legitimately eat me. But, yeah. I have that song dead up stuck in my head. It has not left for, like, a while. It was stuck in my head before I went to bed. Ooh. Can I fall into the hole? No. Um, it has not left my head. It's still chilling there. Making me kind of angry. Hmm. The crooked man hiding in the bookshelves. No. Yeah. Uh, if you guys don't remember that show or haven't seen that show, uh, I kind of recommend watching it because it was pretty cool. And sorry if my voice is really weird. Uh, allergies, because you know where I live has dumb weather, and we'll go from like 80 degrees one day, like which was like a week, like Friday, and then 40 degrees on Saturday. Like that, like those were the highs. It was like close to 80, and then the high of the next day was close to 40. And if you don't know, drastic weather drops like that are not fun. They kind of mess you up and make you want to scream. I don't know what I'm looking for. I thought I saw something. I have a brass key. I have two notebook scraps. What did I find in a hotel? Oh. Did I check this room already? Let's just check this room. Cool. Don't know the passcode. I'm gonna stay away from the doors. Um. Anything new in this? Can I leave yet? I. What if I don't want to look around anymore? What's in here? Done. I hate the noise of that door specifically. Like, <clears throat> sorry, voices being a butthole. Another thing that's pretty cool is I saw the movie with Taylor. Hey, hi Taylor. I'm talking about you. Do you hear me talking about you? No? Okay. Um, <laughs> we saw The Edge of Seventeen, and I just want to say I strongly recommend that movie, especially to anybody like around my age because I'm 17 that's kind of ironic not really it's not ironic at all I don't know when I said that I don't know what I'm doing I have already been everywhere anything new what am I missing okay I've said like for five times that this is open can I Okay, I can't go down there. Okay. Um, Edge of Seventeen, really good movie. It's a comedy, yeah, but I personally didn't feel as if it was much of a com. It was a comedy, yeah, like, I can say that. But there was much more than it just being, haha, funny, funny, because I legitimately bawled my eyes in the theater because I liked the movie a lot. And it, it was just one of those movies that was very sentimental um especially if you've gone through crap in your it's hard to explain without ruining the movie i'm really bad at explaining things too 
Um, but I really recommend seeing it. I'm not going to spoil it, but anybody who wants a good movie to see, go watch that one. Because top quality. A okay, that just almost gave me a heart attack. Okay, I guess what I'm going to do now is what I did before. And I'm going to check under every table. Because I don't know what I'm doing. Because it won't let me leave. Don't know where the girl is. I've checked every room. Unless she's still downstairs. I honestly don't. Can I go back? I'm not checking under every table. Forget that. A mounted deer. Can I play the piano? A grant? No, I can't even play the piano. Can I light this? Nope, can't do anything with that. I honestly, this is just going to be an episode of me wandering around like an idiot because I don't know where to go. <sighs> okay. I don't know where I'm going, what I'm doing. I'm just wandering. So, um, I'll be right back. <laughs> Peace out. See you in a minute. Cool, we're back. I don't know why I'm in the library, but this is something. <laughs> The blackboard in the owner's room said, The strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It'd be on this shelf, right? Ah, here we go. Oh, boy. S Chapter 1. Here's time for some really crappy reading by Victoria. Story of the door. Mr. Utterson, the lawyer, was a man of a rugged... Rugged? I don't know that word. Rugged? Rugged? Something. That was never for like I don't know how to read. I, I do. I know how to read, but it's like it's 8 a.m. and I'm recording and I'm no sleep. That was never lighted by a smile, cold, scanty, and embarrassed in discourse. Backward in sentiment, lean, long, dusty, deary, and yet somehow lovable. At friendly meetings and when the wine was to his taste, something mentally human beaconed from his eye. God, this is so blurry. <laughs> Something indeed which never found its way into his talk, but which spoke not only in the silent symbols of the after-face after -face dinner, yeah, after-dinner face, but more <laughs> often and loudly in the acts of his life. He was uh, something with himself, drank gin when he was alone to mortify a taste for vintages, and though he enjoyed the theater, he did he not crossed the doors of one for twenty years, but he had a proved tolerance for others, sometimes wondering, almost with envy, at the high pressures of something. Okay. Okay, I didn't read the rest of that. Oh, do I have to keep reading all this? Uh, I suck at read. I used to be so good at, like, public speaking and reading, and then I got really self-conscious about how I sound all the time, and it made it worse. Chapter 2. Search for Mr. Hyde. Hyde makes me think of, like, that 70 shows. That 70 show? Is anybody... Anybody watch that? Just me? No? Okay. I can't, like, here's my problem. I can't scroll, and I know there's more. That he, he missed it. Okay. You want to read this? Like, <laughs> I don't want to read this. Anyone want to read this for me? That evening, Mr. Utterson came home to his bachelor house in somber spirits and sat down to dinner without relish. It was his cust it was his custom of a Sunday, when this meal was over, to sit close by the fire, a volume of some dry divinity on his reading desk, until the clock of the neighboring church rang out at the hour of twelve, when he would go soberly and gratefully to bed. On the this night, however, as soon as the cloth was taken away, he took up a candle and went into his business room. There he opened a safe, took from the most private part of it a document endorsed on the envelope as Dr. Jekyll's will, and sat down with a clouded brow to study its contents. The will was holograph, for Mr. Edison thought he took charge of it now that it was made. He refused to lend the least assistance in making of it. It provided not only that in the case of the... Hey, 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 what? There's chapter three's missing. The Carew murder case. Nearly a year later, in the month of October 18th, London was startled by a crime of a singular ferocity and rendered all something more notable by the high position of the victim. More details, blank. I guess I can't see past that. Few startling, made. Okay, don't want to read it. 
And it's another, why am I not, why do I not, I just don't want to read it. I don't want to read that. It was late in the afternoon when Mr. Utterson found his wife, wife, his something, I don't know, his, huh, to Dr. Jekyll's door where he was at once amended by Pooley, carried down, Pooley, 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 carried down by the kitchen offices and across the yard, which blank w once had been a garden. To the building, which was indifferently known as the laboratory or dissecting rooms, the doctor had bought the house from their hires of a celebrated surgeon, and something owned, I know there's something after that, own tastes, being rather chemical than an anatomical, had changed something, the destination of the block, at the bottom of the garden, it was blank, the first time that the lawyers had been received in that part of something friend's quarters, and he eyed the dingy windowless structure with curiosity and gazed round with a distasteful sense of strangeness as he crossed the theater. Once crowded with eager students and now lying gaunt and silent, the tables laden with chemical apparatus, the floor strewn with crates and littered. The last night, Mr. Utterson was sitting by his fireside one evening after dinner, when he was surprised to receive a visit from Pooley. "'Bless me, Pooley, what brings you here?' he cried, and then taking a second look at him. "'What ails you?' he added. "'Is the doctor ill?' "'Mr. Utterson,' said the man, "'there is something wrong.' "'Take a seat, and here's a glass of wine for you,' said the lawyer. "'Now, take your time, and tell me plainly what you want.' "'You know the doctor's ways, sir,' replied Pooley, and how. "'Oh, my God, how many chapters are in this thing? "'I want to... Here's the thing, I'm kind of interested in it now, so now I'm going to keep reading it.' "'Henry Jekyll's full statement of the... something. "'I was born in the year 18 to a large Fortin endowed something with excellent parts.' Inclined by nature to industry, fond of the respect of the wise and good am among my fellow men, and thus, blank, might have been supposed with every guarantee of an honorable and distinguished future. And indeed, the worst something false was a certain impatient gainty of disposition, such as blank made the happiness of many. But such as I found it hard to reconcile with my imperious desire to carry my head high and wear a more than commonly grave countenance. Dogs, can you not jump upstairs? before the blank. Hence it came about that I concealed my pleasures in that when I reached year of reflection and began to look round blank and take stock of my progress and position in the world, I something already committed to a profound duplic duplicity of me. Many a man, I'm guessing that's a man, would have been blazoned such irregular irregularities as I was guilty. What was the point of any of that? Is there any... What was the point? So, sorry you guys had to sit through... Okay, I was... And watch me read literally all of that. Because that was probably the most boring thing anybody in the universe has ever seen. Okay, so I found one thing. Uh... Don't know what to do from here. I'm checking all the bookshelves again, because... You never know what you're gonna find. This headphone thing is irritating my head, like the headphone piece itself. How do you read this, right? Read the unseen. Yeah, I read that already. Some kind of cult. Okay, I read this in occult, and I'm pretty sure it's just cult book. Okay, maybe since I read that, something will change. Put both sides of my headphones on. Mm, this is frustrating. Nothing. Ha ha ha! I'm gonna shoot myself. I want to actually shoot myself. No, no way! Th that monster. Did it really? What am I doing? It it's coming this way. C crap! I gotta escape. I didn't save. I haven't saved so long. Oh boy. Okay. That was fine. Everything's great. Uh, <laughs> Why did I go that way? I didn't click that way. I was like trying to run backwards. Okay, now that I've collected myself. Um, <laughs> gonna end that here. <laughs> now that you guys saw me read boringly and then die. Um, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> death by reading, that's, that's just what this is today, 
Anyways, sorry for that. Whew, that scared me. It was just like, whoop, here you are. Dead. Alright. Cool. Everything's great. Uh, I wanted to vomit a little. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to end this episode here. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.